Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Han Fei from ClickHouse. Today, I will introduce an uh, excellent uh, function called asynchronous asyncs uh, inserts and uh, uh, how we do the duplicate for it. Now, let's begin. Uh, first, uh, let's take a look at how ordinary inserts work in ClickHouse. As we know, one insert will generate at least one part in ClickHouse. One part physically means a directory which contains multiple files. So if the insert is very small, then the performance will be negatively influenced. So in the official document, we recommend the insert should contain at least a thousand rows, but ideally from 10,000 to 100,000 to get a better performance. If the inserts are too small, we have another question that the, back, the background merging threads will not merge these small parts together in time. Then when the parts accumulating to more or uh, too many, it will easy to get a uh, too many parts error, which will slow down our writing throughput. So to uh, solve this problem, uh, first let's check some workaround. So if we did have some, if we do have some uh, requirements of uh, inserting small data, uh, we can uh, we have some recommendation. First is to use buffer table linking to a destination table. This buffer table will buffer your inserts in the server side and the flash into the uh, real table. Um, <coughs> but the downside is it's possible to lose data if the buffer is not flashed in time, and then and at the same time, server crashes. Another way is to batch data on client side, but it needs user to write complex code. And uh, if uh, insert fails, the retry will be expensive as well. So we developed a uh, function called async insert in ClickHouse version 2021-11. This mechanism is straightforward. Similar to buffer table, we insert uh, to the server side and uh, use some buffer to collect these inserts. By default, we have 16 threads to collect this buffer and uh, if the buffer is large enough or reach timeout, we will flash the buffer to the storage. So a part will contain multiple inserts. It can avoid these downsides. At first, async insert is equal to inserts in SQL statements. As long as we enable a setting called async insert, and we can, uh, we can choose to return ACK if and only if an insert is successfully flashed into the story. Note that it is optional. If we wanna sacrifice consistency to get better performance, you can turn this setting off. And since ClickHouse 2023, um, O1 version, we support the duplicate for async insert. You may ask, what is the duplication for async insert? Why it is important? Let's take a look. So in some, some time, we are possible to meet some IO errors. For example, when network is unstable and uh, when you receive a uh, timeout from 
uh, client side, you don't know if your insert is successful or not. In this time, you will retry. But if you do nothing, then you might insert two times. You insert same data two times. That is not what we want. In other systems, for example, a streaming services like Flink or Kafka, they assign a unique ID for network packets to deduplicate the uh, same packets. In RDBMS, for example, MySQL, PostgreSQL, they have primary keys, unique keys to do a unique constraint. In ClickHouse, um, these two methods are too expensive to us. It will greatly increase the complexity of our architecture. So we solve this problem by calculating hash ID for uh, insert by uh, uh, insert data. And we store these hash IDs in the deduplicate the duplication window. Uh, when a new user come, we check if the hash ID existing in the deduplication window. If it exists, it means the insert appears before, then we abort this insert safely. If not, we can assume it is a new insert, then commit this right and write this hash ID to the window. So uh, let's take a look um, for the details. So this is a sync insert procedure. At first, we parse an insert and generate a block in the memory, and then we sort, calculate hash, and write it into the local Stories. At this time, it is a temporary part, uh, which is not committed yet. And what is the deduplication window? It's maintained in the Zookeeper. In Zookeeper, we have three types of keys. First is used to allocate a unique block number. Second, it stores the recent hash IDs to deduplicate. And the third, it is the right ahead logs to uh, record if a part is committed successfully. So in the second step, we get the block number from Zookeeper and uh, check the hash IDs at, uh, at the same time. If the hash ID uh, exist, we abort the right, or else we get a unique block number. With this block number, we can commit the uh, the part locally at first, and then we can commit this part in the zookeeper. In this step, we will check the hash ID again. If conflict, if there are no conflict, we will update the uh, WAL and the, the deduplication window at the same time in the same transaction. But uh, we, we have some problems with async inserts deduplication with the same mechanism. At first, a block contains multiple inserts, which means we have multiple hash IDs for the same block then we need a larger deduplication window. Second, when a conflict happens, we shouldn't abort the whole block. We should figure out which part is deduplicated. Then we can give up this part and retry again. So based on this idea, we have, we know how to do the the duplication for async insert. And the difference is we calculate hash IDs for uh, multiple inserts for a, for a block. And because the um, 
probability of uh, conflict increases. So we add a hash cache between um, the server and the, the zookeeper. And if we detect conflict, we will find out which insert is deduplicated. And we remove this insert uh, out of the block and retry again. So that will be more efficient. So let's see some simple benchmark. Uh, the first column is how much data is deduplicated in our data set. And let's take a look how deduplication impacts our performance. For the zero percentage, we can see the async insert without the duplicate and with the duplicate has very slight difference. The overhead is no more than one percentage. When the duplicated data increases, the overhead increases correspondingly, but linearly. That's because with the zookeeper cache, the retry will be no more than uh, two in practice. So the time, the overhead increase very smoothly. And if we want better performance and sacrifice some consistency, you can set a setting called wait for async insert to zero. And the time will reduce and the performance will increase radically more than half, uh, more than 50 percentage. And uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>